Hello and welcome to Community with me, Melissa Sanfield. I am excited to have two amazing guests in this studio tonight. We are going to learn so much about holistic health and then we're going to talk about a club uh, that's been around uh, for a very, very long time and all the great things that they do in the community. But first, I have a very beautiful woman sitting next to me, and she's so smart, and we've been talking before the show, and she's gonna share some great tips with you. She is an author, she is a nurse practitioner, she is a doctor of integrated medicine, and she is an actress, and she's gonna tell us about that gig that she had and tell you how you can watch her show and tell and we're going to tell you how you can find her so I would like to welcome Dr. Sherilyn Lee PhD thank you very much thank you it's an honor and a pleasure to be here thank you and more so it's a blessing to be here yes yes you know, the way people are not here these days yes yeah it's a blessing tell us a little bit about your background and how you came into holistic medicine and I pulled up your website it's a beautiful very refreshing website. We see many websites today, and we're going to talk all about this and the things that you do, but give us a little background. Well, I'm uh, a nurse practitioner, um, an RN, and um, I actually, in high school, started to, wanted to go into medicine, mm. and my grandmother really said, you know what, you've been such a sickly child. Right. Do you want to spend every day you know, all day in hospitals. You should want to do something else with your life. Right. So I took business, up, you know, as a major during that time. And I got married very, very young. And my um, ex-husband now, but anyway, he said, what is it that you really want to do? And I said, I really think I want to practice medicine. Yes. So I started off in, in a couple, some pre-med classes, and I said, well, I don't know if I really want to work hospitals. Maybe I'll go for an first. So I did that, and then I went for, um, uh, a physician assistant to Charles Drew Medical School, mm -hmm. and from there, a nurse practitioner. Uh, about, I can base it on my daughter's age, because she is 39, so I can't believe that was about 39 wow. years ago, because she was born during that time. Mm -hmm. I had three kids going through a two-year RM program. I had my first two kids. Really? So they're um, 39, 38, 37. Wow. Mm -hmm. That's yeah. amazing. And a grandmother of uh, nine. What? Mm -hmm. You don't look a day over 21. Well, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, it's just truly a blessing. So the true reason why I wanted to uh, go into medicine, and it's actually in a book, we'll talk about it later, that I've written, uh, is because at age seven, I was scheduled to have both my legs amputated. And had not been for this doctor who said, we're not going to amputate your legs out mm -hmm. of seven doctors. One stood back and said, I'm going to take care of you personally myself, and we're not going to amputate your legs. So I remember that in growing up. I said, I really pray that I can make a difference in someone else's life the way this doctor made a difference in my life. Wow. So that's why I went into medicine, because I wanted to make a difference in people's lives. Hmm. Mm -hmm. That's a wonderful story. Okay. How long have you had the wellness health care, the new wellness health care? Well, we changed our name. Um, unfortunately, someone um, thought the last name was just so wonderful because it was heard all over the world that they stole my name, which was Nutrimed Healthcare. Oh, really? So everybody knew me under Nutrimed Healthcare, and I didn't know to buy, this is years ago, to buy .net many, many years ago. Right, right. So they actually stole my website, went to Dubai, and set up a whole big business, and everybody keep thinking it's me and my business on Facebook. So then they actually did set up a website. So I, my attorney said the best thing to do is just start new. So I said new, so it's new wellness health care. Wow. In you. In you is where wellness began. So it ended up being a oh, good cool. favor for me because then I met this wonderful person who developed this website. Mm -hmm. And I just love with his work. Oh, it's beautiful. He did a wonderful job. Gina printed this out for me, but I was looking on the internet and it's it looks so peaceful and so nice and it's very detailed and you have great pictures and it says pretty much a lot of, about you and it shows all of your accolades that's that you've not even received. A, that's not even a quarter of them. Really? I gotta get the rest out of storage. Ah, <laughs> yeah. That's I'm also, amazing. Um, an ambassador for world peace. Oh wow. Yeah, you know, under the Women's Health Federation and I really encourage women to come and join uh, because this is women helping women and it's throughout the country. Wow. You know, it's throughout the country. 
I love when I interview people and they make me look like I don't get up in the morning. You need, you need, <laughs> it was, we had a fellowship last Saturday, uh, and it was people that from Korea and wow. you know, from every country, and it was just really, really wonderful. Amazing. Yeah. So tell us, how, would, how do we find you at New Wellness Healthcare, and what do you do? You know, we want to talk well, about what it is that you do. I'm going to sum up a lot of stuff because I do a lot of different things. Um, New Wellness Healthcare now, instead of having a home-based clinic, what mm -hmm. I provide now is concierge medicine. So I actually travel to the patient. Oh, cool. And they love it. So I provide IV nutrition, uh, glutathione IVs, and mm -hmm. based on lab work and everything that's done, I do hangover IVs. I don't really like to publicize that a whole right. lot, but sometimes it's needed for certain people. So people who went out and had a little too much to drink, mm -hmm. I can come and do an IV, a vitamin C and your B vitamins, and you can go to work the next day. It's like you didn't have anything to drink. Really? But you're also saving your lungs and, you know, every organ system from the alcohol. Right. So I do provide hangover IVs. But IV therapy for every condition, depending on what it is. Glutathione, I work with people with COPD, mm -hmm. emphysema, uh, severe breathing problems, asthma. And this goes in a nebulizer. It works really well for those conditions. But again, um, a good history is done, physical exam is done, okay. and then I tailor a program best to meet that person's needs. Wow. So weight loss um, is, a, is easy now. Right. Along with uh, the Puritan product, uh, which is wonderful. But, um, and um, the lab work. The lab is so important, and it's the way it's looked at. It's not, you know, I used to do lab in hospitals, because I worked in emergency medicine, multitude of clinics. I worked for the hospital for the federal prison. Matter of fact, I tell people my name is on the wall, not as an inmate, but the federal prison, because really? I was there when they opened it up, the one oh, downtown. Oh, wow. Yeah, I was there for the dedication, so they put everybody who was on board their names on the wall. Oh, so. that's wonderful. Yeah, so, um, and you know, what I, I want people to leave with everything is that whatever it is that you want to do in life, is yours. Yes. You know, just pray on it and be very clear as to what you want to be blessed with. Because I always knew I wanted to go into into business and I always knew I wanted to do be a healer and help yes. people to heal um, from years ago. But I also want now, so I'm visualizing this, guys. You hear it from me first. Yes. My audio book, I wanted to receive a Grammy next year. So oh, wow. that's what I'm visualizing. <laughs> yes. So they do this under the spoken word only because the chapter titles, there's 16 chapters, and the first one is Through the Eyes of a Child, mm -hmm. which is very important for people to know what is going on through that child's eyes, not through yours. Right. And so I, I go into my own childhood, and it was through my eyes what I learned and what I didn't see and, and observed in the family, and then bullying, because I was bullied horribly. Really? Oh, my goodness, yes. And um, then the amputation, then the two comas. The first coma, I went to hell. The first, second coma, I went to heaven. So I talk about them both and what got me to both places. And what's the name of your book? Written Before I Was Born. And the reason for that title is my daughter, who's 39, when she was 12 years old, she had a dream that she came into my office and there was a book at the top, on the top shelf. And she said, Mommy, Mommy, there's your book. And um, she said I was busy doing paperwork. She said, Mommy, Mommy, there's your book. It's dusty. Let's get it down off the shelf. And I just ignored her. And she kept trying to reach for this book. And God pulled her arms down and said, you cannot get that book for your mother. She has to get it for herself. Wow. So it, it, you know, her saying that then, and it's in the book, there's a lot of things that I had to do myself. Mm -hmm. Like even with this website, I had to be proactive and with that. And a lot nice. of things in life I had to end up doing myself. So when you do things yourself and not just, you know, pass the book for someone else to do right. it, you know, you pay someone to do it you get a better feel for what you want and how you want to create it. But I did meditate and pray up on the person that I want to help with this website so they could understand my vision. Right. And they did because I have a nonprofit very quickly and I also do breast screening and I had the first ever walkathon <coughs> excuse me for men in two thousand ten. Wow. Men who had breast cancer and mastectomies. So I have a male spokesperson mm -hmm. that when he was twenty one he had a mastectomy wow. at 21, and he's in his 50 now, wow. 50s now. So he's our spokesperson for men, and I didn't know it was so many men that didn't have that 
opportunity to express and just kept holding on to this. Yes. And they gave them an arena to come out and talk about, you know, and we right. just, we had a great time. Oh, wow. We had a great time, so. Oh, cool. But um, I, I it's, it's the screening for men, women, and children, and I do breast health walkathons, not breast cancer. Right. So it's breast health walkathons. Oh, yeah. Which is really important. So now that we're finding out something called inflammatory breast cancer, which is hitting very young girls mm -hmm. uh, who are teenagers. So, <clears throat> and the sad thing about it is it is not detectable with a mammogram or an ultrasound. If you go on my website, you see Doris Mosley. Everybody basically know her. She's a hairstylist here in uh, Los Angeles. Mm -hmm. And she is my spokesperson, and she gives her, um, she gives her, um, testimony of how we met and how we found her mm -hmm. breast cancer through thermography and she had just had a mammogram that said it was negative. Wow. So I'm telling everyone, please do this. They gave me this um, machine under my nonprofit. Mm -hmm. So instead of being $600 for this screening, mm -hmm. it's only, um, it's, it's under $100. Oh, wow. It's under 100 because of where it's, we're located with the machine now. Well, tell us where we can find you. We, I want to make sure we say that at least once or twice. You can find me by uh, calling me mm -hmm. at 310-419-4300, um, or you can visit my website, which is new, NU. And if you remember, NU is where wellness began. Yes. So the website is nuwellnesshealthcare.com. Okay. NU is where wellness began. NU. And you yeah. is where wellness, wellness begins. begins. We're going to so. take a really, really quick break, and we'll be right back with Dr. Lee. Are you a diabetic? Need some energy? Need to quench your thirst? Try Pitbull Sugar-Free Energy Drink, the only energy drink named suitable for diabetics by the American Diabetic Association. And it's now available with no calories, no carbs, no sugar, and no fat, and a smooth, natural blend of energy, vitamins, and minerals. Need to quench your thirst? Try Pitbull Sugar-Free Energy Drink, the only energy drink named suitable for diabetics by the American Diabetic Association. And it's now now available with no calories, no carbs, no sugar, and no fat, and a smooth, natural blend of energy, vitamins, and minerals. Pitbull Sugar-Free Energy Drink is the healthiest, best-tasting energy drink around. For more information and online ordering with free shipping, please visit hiphopbev.com. Remember, Pitbull Sugar-Free Energy Drink, suitable for diabetics, great for everyone. We're having a ball talking, Dr. Lee and I, and we're speaking about so many different things. Well, I have another guest, so we don't have enough time to talk about everything, so she's going to have to promise to come back. I promise. And visit. Yes. Um, what I want to speak about is another very serious subject, and it's the stroke in young women that you, we were talking about before the show. Yes. Um, what I have started with my nonprofit is screening for, it was called the carotid arteries. And I titled it Beauty Shop Stroke Syndrome. Mm. Um, because if you have plaque in your uh, carotid arteries here, um, or plaque in the vertebral artery in the back of the neck, and, or men, this is happen to men too, and they're in, you're in the bowl having your hair washed and right. everything. Uh, if there's plaque there, it's hard plaque and can break off. And it goes to the brain and you can die in a salon. Wow. Now, it, it is, I've been doing this for a good while now. And I'm proud to say that our former Congresswoman Diane Watson mm -hmm. just came on board this weekend to be my spokesperson for women and strokes. Really? Yeah. So I'm really happy she oh, did that. Yay. Yeah, she's she's wonderful. And um, so the reason why I'm doing this is because strokes now are uh, are so prominent with young women. And even when I worked in emergency medicine, because the way women present to a hospital versus a man they don't think they're having a stroke. They right. think, you know, it's an anxiety attack because you you can have just your legs kind of go out on you a little bit or feel weak, or sometimes they want to relate some things to hormonal, or you get very nauseated, uh, you can have vision problems, mm -hmm. or you can smile. This one lady, she actually put herself on YouTube. It was so funny because she, she kept saying, I'm having little strokes. And she, she said she was smiling, she saw the difference in her face, so that's the first way you can tell. Wow. You start, you look in the mirror if you can, you know, see. But the first thing you want to do is call 911. Right. You know, you really want to call 911. If any strange things start happening, a lot of people are single and live alone. And I tell them, make sure your cell phone is somewhere nearby. Yes. Because one gentleman woke up one morning and thought it was still night and didn't know he had had a stroke because he was blind. 
Wow. Yeah, he just thought the lights were still off because it was, you know, nighttime, but he didn't know he had a stroke. Um, and then when he stood up, he got ready to get out of bed, he couldn't walk. So, you know, try to keep, make sure something is near you if you right. live alone. Um, but you want to, if you cannot raise your hands out straight, mm -hmm. or if you cannot uh, smile and your smile is symmetrical, right. being the same on both sides, if your eyelid is drooping, um, there's some signs that you want to, you know, look for. If you just don't feel like yourself, right. something feels off, your legs get very, very, very weak. You start vomiting violently. You know, you want to get to a hospital. Oh, wow. Okay. You know, because this plaque can break off. So this is why I start doing the stroke screening, because it's all preventable. Mm -hmm. If we know earlier, we'll do something. Yes. If you know better, you do better. Yes. You know, so it's so important that people know, and we do the screening early. Oh, yes. Um, I'm sorry. I just kind of <laughs> lost my thought first. Yeah, that bell. No, no, it, it throws I, I was me off every week. Else. Yeah, that's okay. Well, go ahead. We okay. We but, can uh, speak about whatever you like. Okay. So it's it, it's very imperative that women have this done. And I, you would think, you know, I have a, a, an associate who is very very heavy, and we both wouldn't have to, you know, when I started doing the screening, so I said I'll screen myself or screen her when we first started. And I'm like, I know I'm gonna have to work on her because she's gonna clean as a whistle really i was one with a little plaque <laughs> oh really oh. so I, i've worked on my own and so it's gone now oh good so there's things you can do to work on it right because some of the medication you know all of your cholesterol lowering medications will lead to dementia so if you have a parent on it uh, a cholesterol lowering medication like lipitor mevacor right i think they might have taken that one off the market i'm not sure but any cholesterol lowering medication that says statin meds, make sure that they're taking some other supplements to supplement if they're not going to come off. And I don't say just come off because right. I'm not going to do that legally uh, or tell them that. Right. But we have ways to work with people. Okay. You know, and um, because the side effects of those statin drugs are just horrible. Wow. I try to tell my a relative that, and he is now because it just looked like it dissolved his muscle mass. And he's a minister, and he can't even have to walk anymore, and he's in constant pain. And but I told him this is, you know, come off of it. Right. And, but I had some an alternative. You're my family. I could do that to you. But, right. Um, because this is what I do. Wow. So if you have, you know, I had one lady, and it was so sad because she lived alone. She's my patient, and this is before I start doing the concierge. So she would come to the clinic, and she kept telling me all these strange symptoms. And mm -hmm. I said, you know, something is happening with you. If you wake up and your bed is all messed up and you lost track of time, mm -hmm. you know, either you had a seizure or you ha you're having TIAs, which are little mini strokes, there's something going on and she lived alone. Right. So I, I said, you know what? I could not get her HMO to do her parotid arteries. They, they wait until you have a stroke, then they check you. Right. Which is pretty bad. So uh, we did her test and she had 80% blockage here and 90 here. She was not getting any blood going to the brain. Wow. That's why she was lightheaded and dizzy and all these symptoms. So as soon as we, you know, I went with her to the hospital. Mm -hmm. And I do work as a liaison and will go to the hospital with my patients. Right. Just to make sure they get the right lab work done, this is done, that's right. done. You know, just for support. Yes. Because a lot of people don't have anyone to no. do that with them. And so they know that I'm here to do that for them. Oh, good. Mm -hmm. So um, after we got all that taken care of, She's doing so much better. It's oh, amazing. thank God. And here, you know, something as simple as this work on this plaque, you do not want that to break off. No. So if you have plaque here and in the back of the neck, you 9 out of 10 are going to have plaque in the, in the arteries around the heart. Right. So, you know, it isn't just not going to be in one place. It's right. going to be other. So it's best to check all that out. Oh, good. Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, maybe the last thing that we'll speak about is your acting role. Well, um, <laughs> the gentleman who allowed me to use his studio mm -hmm. uh, for producing the audio book, because this is audio, written before I was born, uh, you can go to the website, newwellnesshealthcare.com, and see some information. It is on CD Baby, but there's a little glitch that would be taken care of this week if you want to download it and buy it, because okay. it's audio. Um, but um, Crackler goes to Hollywood. Mm -hmm. um, the gentleman, uh, Fred Rome, who let me u utilize his studio, mm -hmm. um, said when I was finished with the book, he said, 
I'm finishing up this movie. I want you to play a part in it. So how do you tell somebody no who was so nice? You know? Right, right. So I said, well, what role do you want me to play? You know? Right, right. The wife of the vampire. No. Right, sorry. right. So he said, no, the medical expert. So I said, okay. Mm -hmm. So um, I play the part of the medical expert uh, in this movie. So, And uh, Crackler comes to Hollywood. It's, you know, once he told me what was it, it, what it was about, I'm thinking, you know, this is more educational. Because right. Because this bad part only wanted to suck the blood of someone who was on crack cocaine. <laughs> uh, people in L.A. got off of drugs. Wow. So the young people really liked the movie. And like I said, it is a comedy. Right. And um, Where can we find it? You can go to the website. It's on Amazon. You can go to the website. Crackler um, goes to Hollywood. And you can see it there, too. Oh, cool. Yeah. And I'm going to be speaking. I forgot. I'm going to be speaking the third uh, weekend of this month. Mm -hmm. um, I've this on my cell phone, the address. Uh, and mind, body, soul, spirit, and how emotions affect your health. Oh, wow. So I'm going to be speaking there, and um, I'll give you the address. The third Sunday? Yes. The third Sunday, and then the following week, I'll be in Palm Springs doing a three-day workshop. Oh, really? Mm -hmm. So you travel as well? Oh, yeah. yeah. My patients are... And the Bay Area all the way to Palm Springs. Oh, I'm, cool. I'll, I'm all over California. Oh, wow. Yeah. And so. give, us, give us your information one more time while you're finding that. Okay. My uh, clinic information is 310-419-4300. Mm -hmm. The website is new, N-U, wellness, healthcare.com. Okay. So you can always uh, call there, leave a message. Um, one of my, my staff will call you back, you get an appointment set up, and we take it from there. Okay, cool. So we also prepare, if, if a person is going to vaccinate, now they've passed this law, kids, uh, I work closely with a holistic um, pediatrician, mm -hmm. and we only have a few in California Oh wow! that are holistic pediatricians. So there's things you can do for your kids to prepare them, because we're seeing, you know, they said no, but we're seeing Alzheimer's and all these, uh, not Alzheimer's, autism. Um, autism and everything linked to the vaccinations. But not only that, intestinal problems and everything else. So, But when they start forcing the HEP on our teenagers in high school, um, there were a lot of problems with young people. Really? Yeah, I, we will get into that another day. But okay. it's, you know, it's, it's horrible, absolutely horrible. It's almost like you feel like a guinea pig when... And then when you're when it's forced on you, it's like, why are you forcing this on me? If I don't believe in it and I don't want to do it, I shouldn't have to do it. Exactly. When does the government start running your life? I know. <laughs> oh my goodness. But so this is August sixteenth oh, well, from 16th. two to four. Uh, refreshment starts at one thirty. Okay. And the address is nine fifty Holly Vista Drive in Pasadena. And the phone number is 213-342-8610. Okay. 8610, okay. Uh, to call to make reservations, so it's right there. Okay, and I'll make that uh, announcement again next week okay. on the show. And then the one in Palm Springs, they could just call me and I'll give them the information. Okay. 310-419-4300. Okay. And before I know my time is up, I'd like to say this. Yes, ma'am. This is something I have all my patients. I'm, I don't have my little badge on today. But I have them to say, and I want everybody to repeat after me. Okay. I am. I am. So grateful. So grateful. That I am. That I am. A magnet. A magnet. For miracles. For miracles. Yay. Yeah. Everybody give a hand. So you can see me on Facebook. My grandson um, set me up on Instagram. <laughs> oh, really? He's like, grandmother, I'll put you on there. So oh. I'm like, oh, okay. <laughs> so you're trying something new, huh? I, well, yeah. So I, I put actually just motivational um, things on there or something dealing with health. Where you know, do we find you on Instagram? Um, Dr. Lee Health Talk. Okay. Dr. Lee Health, health Talk. Talk. And okay. that's actually also the name of my radio show. Okay. And mm -hmm. where do we find the radio show? Um, actually, you can find it on the website. Okay. Or you can go to Blog Talk Radio, Dr. Lee Health Talk, 
but we have uploaded all of our archive shows onto the website also. Okay. So you can go to newwellnesshealthcare.com and find the shows. Okay, mm -hmm. good. That's a lot of great information. Mm -hmm. uh, Dr. Lee, PhD, was here giving us some great tips on how to become healthier and try to, to stay healthy. And she's there for you. Uh, let's give your number one more time. We can't give that enough. 310-419-4300. Prevention is priceless. Prevention is it's priceless. priceless. Yes. You know, we like I said, you know better, you do better. Yes. So let's get in there and find out where you are with your health. Yes. So nothing happens later because it's too much in the environment that's making us sick. That if we catch it now, you won't have a problem later. Right. Right. Okay. So imperative. Okay. And then you can be a grandmother of nine like me. Ah, <laughs> she looks so young. Oh my goodness. Well, I feel great too. So. Yes, and you look good. Yeah, it's very, you. very nice to have you here. Thank you very much. Thank, thank you, you so much. Thank you. All right, we're going to take a quick break and we'll be back and we're going to talk to Corey and he's going to tell me how to pronounce his last name. <laughs> we'll be right back. Are you a diabetic? Need some energy? Need to quench your thirst? Try Pitbull Sugar-Free Energy Drink, the only energy drink named suitable for diabetics by the American Diabetic Association. And it's now available with no calories, no carbs, no sugar, and no fat, and a smooth, natural blend of energy, vitamins, and minerals. Need to quench your thirst? Try Pitbull Sugar-Free Energy Drink, the only energy drink named suitable for diabetics by the American Diabetic Association. And it's now available with no calories, no carbs, no sugar, and no fat, and a smooth, natural blend of energy, vitamins, and minerals. Pitbull Sugar-Free Energy Drink is the healthiest, best-tasting energy drink around. For more information and online ordering with free shipping, please visit hiphopbev.com. Remember, Pitbull Sugar-Free Energy Drink, suitable for diabetics, great for everyone. Hi, I am here with the gentleman that deals with the children that are in our community. I was driving down Vermont and I saw this big, beautiful building and it said Challengers Boys and Girls Club of America. And I'm like, why haven't they been on my show? <laughs> so here we are. We had a hiccup or two, but we are here. Corey Dantzler. Thank you. Good to, be here. Good to see you. So you are with Challengers Boys and Girls Club yes. of America. Tell us all about that, how you got started. Sure, and sure. Uh, I'm the president and CEO of Challengers Boys and Girls Club, and uh, Challengers was started back in 1968 by my mm -hmm. dad, Lou Dantzler, oh, wow. who, uh, with 12 boys in the back of a pickup truck, was taking those boys one Saturday to Sentinella Park and did that. And uh, after that experience, they played football, they did all kinds of little things at the park, and they went back and told their friends, and the next weekend my dad had 24 kids, and then wow. it just kind of grew from there. Uh, and so my dad was really making two and three different trips back and forth to the park, uh, taking these boys, uh, and feel it, realized that he needed a facility and needed somewhere to kind of have them do these activities. And right on 50th of Vermont was in an old abandoned Vaughn supermarket that was abandoned after the Watts riots. Mm -hmm. uh, they did a story on my dad in the Times and where he talked about what he was doing with these young boys at the time and that he needed a facility. And someone from the Vaughn's Corporation saw that ad brought my dad in, told him they had a building for him, and they deeded that building over to him for $1, and he turned it into Challengers Boys and Girls Club, and here we are almost 50 years later serving just over 1,400 boys and girls annually. Uh, now our building is a 52,000 square foot building. We take up a city block uh, where we have tennis courts, a track and field and soccer field. Uh, we also have a charter school on site that, that operates under his name. It's called the Lou Dantzler Middle School. That's a part of uh, ICEF uh, Charter. Uh, so we've been very fortunate and very blessed to be able to be in the community for this long and serving boys and girls and families, really. Well. That's the whole interview. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, my goodness, what else am I going to talk about? Yeah. That is wonderful. You've given yeah. the whole history, yeah. and so you're stepping into your father's footsteps. Yeah, my dad uh, unfortunately passed away in 2006, and I had been working with him when I graduated from college. and got to uh, really understand what the business was about for about 13 years until he unfortunately passed away. And then I assumed the role as, as president and CEO. Uh, and my, my brother, Mark Dantzler, who was uh, working with us at the time, who was our program director, I unfortunately lost him in 2011 mm. to cancer. Uh, so uh, some of the things that the doctor was talking about really resonated in me because I lost my dad to a stroke. Oh, wow. uh, so. 
Uh, but it's just, you know, that aside, it's been been just an indeed an honor and privilege to carry on his vision and his legacy and, and uh, will continue to do so. so oh, that's yeah, wonderful. Yeah, so. so I need a brief explanation on Challengers Boys and Girls Club of America. Okay. What's the difference okay. between Boys and Girls so Club? So it's just Challengers Boys and Girls Club. We're part of Boys and Girls Clubs of America which is kind of like the, the overseer of all the Boys and Girls Club. They, we, there's just over 4,000 Boys and Girls Clubs across the country and also on military bases as well. Um, so we're a part of, a part of their uh, affiliation. So uh, there, are, there are 27 separate Boys and Girls Clubs organizations just in L.A. County okay. uh, that serve you know, just over man, close to five, 6,000 kids just, this, just in the L.A. County as well. Oh, so wow. we're, just, we're just one of that, one of those organizations. But um, I think the uniqueness about our organization is that we, uh, you know, the, how we started. But one of the things that we do that my dad was real, you know, uh, real visionary about was having parental involvement. Mm -hmm. So the parents are required to volunteer five hours per month of their time in order for their children to be involved with the club. Uh, so it's a very family orientated organization. It's not one of those organizations where we just kind of want parents to drive by and drop off kids and kind of keep going. We want the parents to be involved. Right. So four hours is volunteering in different different areas of the club and different program areas. And the fifth hour is a parent meeting that happens on the fourth Saturday of each month. We can get anywhere from two to three hundred parents to come to a parent meeting. Really? So, yeah, we've been we've been you know been at it a long time and and people want to know how we do it. And my dad always said it's simple. You just ask the parents to participate and, and they come. Oh. Um, but I think the thing that we do more importantly is provide a safe environment for for the kids. Kids. We're right in the heart of South Central Los Angeles, and and um, you know, unfortunately, it has that negative connotation out there. But but if you come to our organization, you see the smiles on the kids' faces, and we serve kids ages six to seventeen, mm -hmm. uh, and we have an array of programs from athletics to um, uh, we have a home ec, uh, where kids are learning home economics, how to how to cook healthy. We also have a dental program where kids receive free dental services as oh, well, wow. uh, and our membership fee is only seventy five dollars a year, so. It's not like you know. Uh, for all those, for all those additional programs, it doesn't cost any additional money. Uh, and so we also have teen programs. There's mm -hmm. computers. There's homework help. Uh, you know, we, we we try to keep the kids busy with all the different activities. So if I wanted to bring my daughter mm -hmm. and I said, oh, you know, Corey, I want to enroll my daughter. What would I do? You just give us a call at three two three nine seven one six one six one and set up for an orientation. Uh, so you come to the orientation with your daughter and, and there we'll explain all our, our rules and regulations and, and uh, sign you up and uh, she'll be able to start later that week. Uh, really? Your membership's good for one year, one whole calendar year. Wow. So even in the summertime, and the summertime is a very you know, critical uh, time of the year for parents who are looking for their kids to be involved with programs right. and want them in a safe environment. And we know there's other programs out there that, you know, are good programs, but some of them can be a little pricey. Right. And we like to think that, you know, for what we're offering at a very nominal fee that uh, the kids can be there. We open up in the summertime, we open from 7 in the morning until 6.30 in the evening. And then during the school year, we open from 7.30 in the morning until 7 in the evening. So we try to accommodate working parents and things like that as well. So do you do the pickups, like for parents who can't pick up we do children? pick up from certain schools. Uh, that's probably the only additional fee that we have a transportation service one okay. way that we'll pick up from the schools and bring them directly to the club. Okay. Uh, so yeah, I mean we we just try to make sure that we're providing that safe environment that for the, for the kids that's definitely needed. And like I said, you come to the org, you come to the club, you see the smiles on the kids' faces. Uh, you know they they're act they they're active. They're doing a lot of programs. Uh, there's arts and crafts. Everything that the kids can really get involved with as well. You should have brought an application. <laughs> you got to come to the orientation. Oh, <laughs> this was my orientation. Right, right. Yeah, you get all like, the good I like stuff. to cut a few get corners. All the information right now. Okay, we're gonna take a quick break and we're gonna come back with some great uh, some more great information about the boys and girls, the Challengers Boys and Girls Club of America. We'll be right back. Great. Are you a diabetic? Need some energy? Need to quench your thirst? Try Pitbull Sugar-Free Energy Drink, the only energy drink named suitable for diabetics by the American Diabetic Association. And it's now available with no calories, no carbs, no sugar, and no fat, and a smooth, natural blend of energy, vitamins, and minerals. Need to quench your thirst? Try Pitbull Sugar-Free Energy Drink, the only energy drink named suitable for diabetics by the American Diabetic Association. And it's now 
now available with no calories, no carbs, no sugar, and no fat, and a smooth, natural blend of energy, vitamins, and minerals. Pitbull Sugar-Free Energy Drink is the healthiest, best-tasting energy drink around. For more information and online ordering with free shipping, please visit hiphopbev.com. Remember, Pitbull Sugar-Free Energy Drink, suitable for diabetics, great for everyone. So we were here speaking about the Challengers Boys and Girls Club of America. And this nonprofit, which is a great nonprofit, is located at 5029 South Vermont Avenue in LA. The number is 323-971-6161. And Corey, I was saying that I wanted my daughter to join, but I didn't ask the time. I mean, the age limit. Yes, so age, tell me about the ages. Six to 17. Okay. We start at six. Uh, but you know, we had we've had kids who started the club at age six to go all the way to almost age seventeen. Really? So uh, they, we call them lifers. Uh, you know, they just stay in the program. Yeah. And, you know, when the kids are in the program, when you'll see, we'll, we'll let them give you a tour and show you around. The kids are in different colored T-shirts, and mm -hmm. the different colored T-shirts symbolizes the different age groups of the kids. So okay. when they start out at six years old, they're in these little cute blue, blue shirts, mm -hmm. and then when they become teenagers, they're in purple and, and navy blue shirts. So okay. when we have kids that are, you know, kind of transitioning and turning different colored shirts, it's always kind of humbling for the staff to be able to go, wow, we remember when they were a blue shirt right, or, right. or something along those lines. So oh, it works cool. out well. And one of the things I was mentioning while we're on the break is that we do also uh, have a radio program as well. Yes. And none other, Mr. Cliff Winston is our radio uh, bro uh, oh, rodeo cool. coordinator who yes. was with KJLH for many years. But uh, And then we also have video production as well. So oh, kids are doing wow. video production too. So uh, my dad's goal was to try to give kids uh, an opportunity to look at a lot of different uh, programs and yes. array of things for them to kind of get involved with. Oh, so, that's wonderful. Yeah, yeah. I drove by and I saw the large facility and mm -hmm. I was wondering how did it get there? Mm -hmm. And this is a great story that yeah. Bonds actually gave back and, and that your dad he could have said, oh, no, that's okay, I don't want it. Yeah. But he actually built on it and built a legacy for so many thousands of children that have come in under you mm -hmm. and then for you, a legacy for you as well. Yeah, you know, when, when the club started, he always joked that I was born with a club membership card in my hand. Aww. I was just two years old and, you know, I had a, my, my brother was older and, and uh, who was eight, and so I would always see them leave to go to the club and want to run around with them. And so they allowed me to do that. But the club has had, you know, had really made, a, a, a very big impact on a lot of young lives and we've even had you know people like Russell Westbrook is one of our one of our kind of claim to fame as he came to the club as oh, a young wow. child James Harden did as well a lot of NBA guys Eric oh, Davis wow. you know back back uh, in, the, in the 70s and the 80s you wow. know a lot of those guys came through the club John Singleton was a member of the club as well really uh, so you know it, it really and and that's a lot you know we, there's famous alumni and boys and girls club Shaquille O'Neal Denzel Washington yes. of course who is our national spokesperson. Uh, you know, uh, Colin Powell has been involved with, you yes. know, with Boys and Girls Club. So um, it really, you know, is a, is a really a good sound foundation for a lot of youth in, in, in all communities. And I totally believe in the work that, that we do and, yes. and the safety that we provide for them. And with it being a nonprofit agency, you know, one of the things that we struggle with is always raising money for yes. the organization as well because charging $75 a year doesn't, you know, keep the lights doesn't on. Doesn't keep the lights on. So we have to fundraise, and we, you know, we have to have a good board of directors that really see uh, the value in that as well. In and the so, vision. In the vision. So if you go to our website, which is uh, cbgcla.org, uh, it talks a lot about the club, the programs, the history. Uh, we're also on Facebook as well mm -hmm. as Challengers Boys and Girls Club, uh, and you get to see all the happy and smiling faces of the kids. Uh, a lot of the programs and activities that we do. Uh, and so it's just, you know, it's it's a blessing to be able to, to come to work every day and really want to, you know, there's, there's jobs that people have where they don't want to come to work right, every day. Right, right. Or they wake up in the morning like, oh, I got to go to work. But, you know, for, for us at the club, it's just, it's an honor and privilege to come to work every day. So tell me, what is a typical day wow. at the Boys and Girls Club for you? Like when you for, first get to work? For like me, oh boy. <laughs> uh, I usually wait and see kind of what what's going on. I mean, the thing I like about coming to work every day for myself is, when I pull up on the lot, uh, I can I see the kids, and you know I walk through the through the courtyard or I walk inside the building. I'm always greeted by kids that are saying hello, who know my name, um, and that's important. That yes. kids know who you are, yes. and not just some person 
who they don't see every day. Uh, like you know, like today, we we had a, a basketball game where we had our staff play against our teenagers, mm-hmm. and I was able to referee the game. Oh wow! So you know, it's not like I just sit up in my office. Right. And, so I come down, I see what activities and programs are. There's some there's some things that are happening with the kids where you know if somebody's bothering somebody. I'll even get involved with that as right. well. But a lot of what I do is is to make sure that the uh, the programs are operating how, as, as they should. Um, constantly meeting with funders and talking to them about investing and getting involved with the organizations right. and making those making those uh, collaborations work. I uh, love talking to parents as well. Uh, who, some who are new to the organization may have questions. And so yeah. at the end of the day, you know, I, I make myself readily available for parents to be able to have those conversations because a lot of times, you know, they're, they're their children and they're their most precious and, and resource that they have and they yes. want to make sure that they're being uh, treated fairly and that they're in a good environment and so yes. I'll make sure that I'm there to actually you know reassure that but a lot of what I do uh, in my role is to make sure that that organization is going to be there long 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 time and, right. and and that's that's kind of been my goal is to make sure that the organization stays around and serves you know the, the children in that community. And I would imagine that that your club Mm -hmm. being in that area has made such a great impact like you said with the NBA players Mm -hmm. but just in general Mm -hmm. it gives the children a safe place to be their parents don't have to worry about them and it's such a positive environment is that true that's very true and and some of the even things that we're looking to do even going further is uh, we're looking at uh, a a college bound program for our teenagers Uh, and also to take some of the people that we have in the club and go into local high schools to work with college counselors because there's so many kids uh, that uh, aren't going to be the Russell Westbrooks of the world or the James Hardens of the world but they need to have the same opportunity to go and get a good edu- education and now even we even now have kids that have come through the club and now they're married or they have children and they're putting their kids into the club so now we're seeing second and third generation wow. of club members and i don't think you see that unless you are you're providing something and you're doing, the right, doing the right thing doing the right thing I wanted to ask you about some of your fundraising efforts. Mm-hmm. What are the type of things that you do for fundraising? Beg, borrow, and steal. Ah! No, I'm teasing. <laughs> uh, you know, we, we have uh, community events. We just had a pancake breakfast uh, and also a community health fair as well where uh, it's more community awareness. Uh, but there is um, other opportunities. We do a lot of grant writing and things like that yes. as well. Uh, but, uh, you know, we will take donations that go to a specific program. There's some people who may want to see their uh, funding goes towards education right. or to the arts. You know, we have, you know, into athletics and yes. keeping kids active and healthy, uh, you know, is very important as well because we know about the childhood obesity rate. Yes. Uh, and so we want to make sure that they're involved as well. So uh, I think more more importantly for myself is just to really get people to invest into the organization with their time. Right. Come and volunteer. Come and see what we're about. Come and help a kid out with their homework. Yes. We can definitely, you can always write us a check. Yes. And my dad taught me that people who can just write checks, they can write a check and give it to you and go away. But we want to develop that relationship yes. and that partnership with people, be it individuals, corporations, foundations, uh, to really come and see what exactly is happening uh, and the impact that we're making in that community and invest in that. I didn't, I didn't ever meet your dad, but it sounds like you got a lot of your dad in you. <laughs> yeah, yeah, my dad definitely had a way. And, and, you know, he had a very interesting story. He grew up in the Jim Crow South. He was a sharecropper at Cotton. Wow. Uh, and, you know, he lost his mom and dad at a very early age. And so a lot of his... Uh, a lot of his role models were uncles and things like that and he uh, you know he ended up going into the military into the Air Force Uh, he got you know he got shipped out here uh, to March Air Force Base Mm -hmm. and met my mother on a blind date and uh, they started seeing each other and when they got married my dad now had a brother-in-law that mm-hmm. was about eight or nine years old, mm-hmm. which he, him and all his friends were the first 12 kids that started the, wow. started the club. And so my uncle now is back at the club working and he has all the history in terms of, he actually named the club Challengers Boys and Girls wow. Club. And he, he named it, he used to read comic books. And he read a comic book called Challengers of the Unknown. Mm -hmm. And what my dad would do with these boys when they played in the park, at the end of the day, they would sit under a tree and they would just kind of talk about the club and, and, you know, what they would want to see if they Mm -hmm. had opportunity. And so they were thinking, well, what can we name it? And my uncle came up with Challengers and it kind of stuck. 
So, uh, so yeah, we have very, very rich history, and uh, we're, we're starting our alumni association as well to try to get those alumni to come back and give up their time and talents as right. well, uh, and hopefully some of them are in a position where they can write a check too, yes. you know, so, because that's, that's how you kind of keep this going. Oh, so, yes. Yeah. Yes, I read some things on your website that you have Disney and mm -hmm. Time Warner and Macy's, and you don't get that kind of sponsorship no, no, from sitting around and <laughs> twiddling your thumbs. Yeah, that and, and and with Boys and Girls Clubs of America, they have they have these a lot of these corporate relationships that they've established with Disney and and and, uh, and with Macy's, and those organizations now reach out to us uh, for funding support and also for volunteer opportunities as well. Disney has been a great supporter really? of not just Challengers but all the Boys and Girls Clubs. Mm -hmm. I know know each year they give out Disneyland tickets uh, they sponsor different events uh, we have one event called the youth of the year where we recognize and honor one youth ages 14 to 18 uh, and what their accomplishments and what they've done in the club right. and some of the stories that the, our youth tell from you know being abused as a child to to maybe even co contemplating suicide mm -hmm. and because of the club because of the people that are there their, their lives have, has, has changed. Right. And, you know, quite frankly, a lot of the stories that those kids tell that we hear through the Youth of Year program, we don't even know as adults. And I think for us, it, it talks about we just don't understand sometimes the impact of, these organ, of our organization yes. that we make on kids until you really start peeling back some of the layers that uh, some of the, because these kids are really, they don't, they're not having the opportunity to grow up like you know, kids did 20 or 30 years right, ago. They right. have so many different adult responsibilities. They have to take care of younger brothers or younger sisters. Uh, and so when they come to the club, they can be a kid. Uh, and even at, at our club, you know, we have a, a, a dress code that we enforce, mm -hmm. you know, because we know that kids are dealing with, you know, be it negativity or gang situations in, in their communities or maybe even in their schools. Right. So when they come to the club, they don't have to worry about all those things. Right. They can be a kid. They can play basketball. They don't have to worry about somebody trying to intimidate them or those types of things right. as well. Then as parents, I'm sure we worry about when we send our kids off, yes. you know. Uh, so we wait, we make sure that we provide that environment for them. Oh, good. Yeah. All right. Well, we're going to take a quick little break, and okay. then we're going to come back with some closing uh, remarks and just give you a little few more tidbits about the Challengers Boys and Girls Club of America. I'm here with Corey. We'll be right back. Are you a diabetic? Need some energy? Need to quench your thirst? Try Pitbull Sugar-Free Energy Drink, the only energy drink named suitable for diabetics by the American Diabetic Association. And it's now available with no calories, no carbs, no sugar, and no fat, and a smooth, natural blend of energy, vitamins, and minerals. Need to quench your thirst? Try Pitbull Sugar-Free Energy Drink, the only energy drink named suitable for diabetics by the American Diabetic Association. And it's now available with no calories, no carbs, no sugar, and no fat, and a smooth, natural blend of energy, vitamins, and minerals. Pitbull Sugar-Free Energy Drink is the healthiest, best-tasting energy drink around. For more information and online ordering with free shipping, please visit hiphopbev.com. Remember, Pitbull Sugar-Free Energy Drink, suitable for diabetics, great for everyone. And we are back. We're speaking to Corey. He is the CEO of Challengers Boys and Girls Club of America at five, do I remember the address? Five zero. Five zero two nine <laughs> South Vermont. Five zero two nine South Vermont. I wanted to speak to you about your staff. Mm -hmm. In order to work with children in this climate, in this day and time that sure. we're living in, sure. your staff has to be absolutely amazing. The staff is the reason why the club is successful. And, and much, much bigger than what I what I'm able to do uh, they are the ones who actually make it work. They, we, I have a saying that kids vote with their feet, meaning you can have the greatest building or the greatest programs, but if you're not running a, a quality program mm -hmm. where kids really want to be a part of, they're going to take their feet and they're going to walk outside the building or they're going to go to another organization. Right. So our staff make sure that they are committed. They make sure that they're they're tough, but they're fair, mm -hmm. uh, and that they have love uh, for all of our children that come through our doors. Because you know we, we we don't always get the the best kids. Right, you know, right. We get kids that are sometimes challenging, right. and, and and sometimes are, are in a new environment where 
they're not used to you know discipline or they're not used right. to someone telling them hey you, you you can't put your hands on that person so the patience that they have and you know I always say that the, the folks on the floor are the are the foot soldiers and, and they give their time they don't do this to make a lot of money right. but I've, I've got I have employees that have been with us for double digit years wow. you know, I'm, fortunately I'm the old guy of the group I've been there 23 years uh -huh. now uh, but I have staff that's been there 15 years, 16 years, wow. uh, and very dedicated to to the vision and to the mission of the organization. And uh, I'm I'm lucky to have them. Yeah. You know, I was I, I drive I drive the organization from the back. You right, know, I put right. them out front, and they're the ones who actually make it make it happen for for me and for the organization. And they and you know they they believe in what they're doing. Right. And 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 until they want to do something else and and and, and move forward, then. You know, I want to make sure that they're uh, that they're there and they're valued, and I know the kids love them. Oh, you know? good. So, yeah. Yes, I was thinking about um, was wanted to speak to you about something that was on your web mm -hmm. website that you sustain meaningful relationships. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And so, does that mean with each other, with peers, with the children, or I think a little bit of everything. I mean, I think that's that's the important part. That's why those kids come back. That's why when they have those children, they remember those relationships that they had with, with me. It's always interesting when, when someone comes back and they go, I remember you mm -hmm. when I was eight years old. I'm looking at them going, I don't remember your name. Right, but right. You look, and they have these stories and they say, I remember when, when this building wasn't here. We have so many different, you know, opportunities with, with kids even now. You know, and and like I was saying earlier, sometimes you don't understand those stories, and and we encourage our kids to make sh or our staff to make sure they know every kid's name. Mm -hmm. You know, because it's so meaningful. Because a lot of these kids wake up in the morning. Sometimes they're not getting fed. Sometimes there's no one saying have a great day at work right. at school. No one. Sometimes they're 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 not even getting that at school. They're not right. getting that encouragement. So when they come to the club. Now they can have an opportunity to have that type of feel good. You know, right. somebody come, you come through the door. Hey, John, how you doing today? It's like, wow, you know my name. Right. Or I'll talk to kids and say, hey, how'd you do in school today? Right. Or where's your report card? I yeah. want to see it. Okay, wait a minute. You know, you need some help with this. Yes. Get another staff. We're going to work with him on his English oh, or his cool. math. You know, so it's it, we we take kids under our wings. You know, we don't we just don't count them and say, hey, thanks for coming. Right. We want to make sure that we make a difference in the lives, and and we wish we. Can save every kid, right. but uh, but the ones that come through our doors and the parents and families that we serve, we want to make sure we're going to give them a fighting chance. Oh, good. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, and there was one more thing. Mm -hmm. So I'm interviewing you now because I'm going to be yeah, playing yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> So I read about uh, character and leadership development. Mm -hmm. So one of the things that we do with that is with leadership development is our teenagers now that are 14 and, and years of age or older they can actually become junior staff at the club. Oh, wow. So when I was 14, my first job was at the club. Mm -hmm. So it gave me a sense of responsibility. I felt good about myself. Right. It also was a good measure of birth control because at 14, I knew I didn't want any kids <laughs> because all the kids wouldn't listen and right, everything right. else. So, but it gives them an opportunity to, to know about themselves in terms of what that responsibility is with, with working or just in, in some of the skills and tools that they learn at the club. They can now take it and apply it to wherever they go. Right. Uh, so it's important for them to, so we have a program called Leaders in Training, and that program uh, takes the teenagers and they volunteer in the club, and based upon how they're volunteering, they can do activities. Okay. Or they can go to Magic Mountain, they can go to Knoxbury Farm, based, oh, cool. upon, based upon that. And so there, and there's different activities and programs that they go through so that they know exactly you know, how to be a good leader. Because sometimes being a leader at 13 and 14 years old is very difficult. Very you got difficult. peer pressure yes. and all those other things that those that the kids deal with, especially in this age of social media and yes. everything else. So, they we, we teach them those things, and we know they're going to be little stumbles here and there, but we're there to kind of correct it and, and kind of work with them. And that's why it's important to have the parents involved because now we can bring the parent in and say, "Hey, we had this situation with him today or with her today, and right. here's what we did." And and so that way, now the parents check in with us. How did right. they do today? Or right. how, how was his behavior? And so it just kind of it works out. That oh, way. cool. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Oh, my God. Time is flying by so fast. <laughs> something else. Oh, and the last thing that mm -hmm. I wanted to speak about was empowering our youth. How yeah. do we do that? We have to give them the responsibilities that they need in order to be successful. We also need to set them up for success as well. 
uh, one of the things that we talk about with our teams or with all of our club members is about this idea of giving back. Mm -hmm. And a lot of them felt like coming to the club was their way of giving back. It was like, no, mm -mm. we need to, we, you guys need to go out. We need to go out and do community cleanups. We need to go right. out into the community and let people know who we are, wear our club t-shirts and feel very proud and yes. very uh, and honored about what we do. Right. So as staff, we have to make sure that we put them in the proper positions in order to be successful. So if it's going out and do a cleanup at Hill at Hilda Bay or going out, we have our kids who put food together and take us to homeless shelters. Oh, wow. Uh, so we have to make sure that they understand about that and, and empowering them to, to give back and understanding what that means to them as a citizen as well. And that makes them uh, well-rounded. Makes them well-rounded, but also gives them that moral compass that they need mm -hmm. as well. And I think that's a lot of what's missing. I think sometimes in our youth they don't they don't have that that sense of, 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 of a moral compass. But they also, I also talk to them about, you know, back in our day when we would be talking how we were at, at teens, and then an adult would walk up, we'd, we'd watch what oh, we had yeah. to say, mm -hmm. and then we you know, and then, they, then we would... These teens now sometimes they just they don't there's care. No who, filter, there's no filter. There's no filter in there, right? So we have. So it's up to us to make sure that they that they understand what those parameters are and what that means. And it takes a little while, uh, and it's tough love sometimes, but they come around. So it looks like at the Challengers Boys and Girls Club that you are indeed giving the children in your area in your scope. Mm -hmm the tools that they need that will carry them through the rest of their lives. And be successful. And be and successful. And be positive citizens wow. is what it's about because we have to start somewhere. We do. We do have to start somewhere. And, and I'm going to start, start right at Challengers. I'm going to start right. Yeah. I'm going to start Cadence on September 29th, the day she turns six. I'm going to be like, Corey, bring I'm on my way. Bring her on down. Yeah, I'm going to bring, bring her, her because down. I think it would be great for her to be with her peers and to learn and to have all these great activities to yeah. learn how to cook and to right. get uh, homework because they're teaching them something called core, common core, which yeah. is yeah. nothing like I learned mm -hmm. when I was growing up. So mm -hmm. yeah, we're gonna be there. You got my sign up. I could give you my check tonight, um, <laughs> sign her up. And uh, cash I'm, only. Cash only, oh, mm. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, you know me, but you don't know me, right? <laughs> right. So I think that that's a wonderful thing that yeah. you're doing. and. I would love, you know, for my daughter to be a part of the club, and I like to be involved, so you wouldn't even have to ask me to show up, and I like fundraisers yeah. and things like that. Maybe so. we can have you come out and teach the kids how to do interviewing and things like that with radio and video as well, and they can come and take a visit here or something along. There's opportunities for, for opportunities. the kids to be, to be involved, and that's what it's about. That's wonderful. Yeah. Okay, give us your info one more time and any closing remarks. Sure. Challengers Boys and Girls Club, address is 5029 South Vermont. Our phone number is area code 323-971-6161, and our website is www.cbgcla.org. And if anything I can say in closing is believe in the kids in, in South L.A. at Challengers. Uh, believe in what we're doing. Come and get a tour to actually see exactly what impact and what, 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 how we're changing lives oh, wow. uh, in South L.A. Cool. Good right. news. Good business. Go. Well, good yeah. interview. Absolutely. Thank you so much for coming. I really Thank appreciate you. you. Thank you for having me. Glad we worked, worked everything out. Oh, yeah, we did. <laughs> and you practically interviewed yourself. Uh, no <laughs> so problem. that's always nice. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So we're going to check out Corey at the Challengers Boys and Girls Club. And if you have children, sign them up. It's a safe place to be. Absolutely. A lot of great things to learn there. And, uh, we need to make sure we keep everything close right. and keep our children close, especially to keep our children close. So Absolutely. we're going to see you next week in the community and uh, have a great week. Bye-bye.